On the breakfast, Lekki Deep Sea Port takes delivery of three SSTS cranes, 10 rubber tired grantees, witnesses the arrival of the first vessel to Berta the port. Is this a major milestone to the commencement of the port? Also on the breakfast, gunmen opened fire on the convoy of President Mohamed Buhari in Katsina State. What is the implication of this? We will be reviewing the biggest stories making the headlines across uh, national dailies with an analyst. Welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Bopo. It's a beautiful morning right here, very wet in the city of Lagos. I hope you all protected as you go about your businesses. As always, we set off the conversation with a top trending. Now, uh, top trending will be issues that are making the rounds, generating reactions and comment in different spaces. Uh, first of it, it's very saddening. And of course, the second would also be uh, saddening as well. But the first is the uh, attack on the president's convoy. Uh, bandits attack President Muhammad Buhari's convoy. Very, very unfortunate incident that happened yesterday where reports say that some terrorists opened fire on President Muhammad Buhari's advance uh, convoy deployed ahead of a trip to Daura, the casino state for Sal Salazar liberation. Now, for, for the president, for every time the president has to visit any part of the country, you have a team of persons put together. You call it an advanced team, an advanced team. Now, the advanced team is saddled with the responsibility of going ahead of the president and ensuring that, you know, everything is in place. And so um, this convoy was actually attacked. We also know that the president would not, you know, travel via road, but this sends a lot of signal. Details are very sketchy in the sense that uh, we have reports saying that two persons died, not to certain or the said some persons sustained injury. Uh, but there was also a statement from uh, the presidential media aide. We're talking about the senior special assistant to President Mohamed Buhari on media and publicity, Gaba Shewu, confirming that in a statement he explained that the convoy uh, of cars carrying the advanced team of security guards as well as protocol and media officers ahead of the president's trip to Dara for Salah came under that attack and it was also repelled by gallant you know, military men. Like I mentioned earlier on, details quite sketchy. Uh, sketchy. But th th there are several comments and reactions, and, and it's really worrisome that if you know, the number one citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria can be under, his convoy can be under attack. Not that the president was attacked, but of course an attack on the president's convoy is, is, can be translated to an attack on the president himself. And everyone's saying, if... Um, you know, this attack can actually happen, then who else is left out in all of this? But another question is also that if, if there's going to be, if the president is going to visit, one would expect that there should be uh, some level of surveillance, you know, before the team actually would head out. I mean, before the advance team will go ahead. Now, what if, what if the president was on that particular convoy? What if he was the president? We know the president would not you know, go by road, but I'm just saying, it could have been the president on that convoy, and what can happen? The issue of security is a major concern. Lives and property, everyone has a life, uh, you know, right to, to leave, right to live. And uh, we, we need to take you know, this very, very serious. As much as it's government's responsibility to ensure that lives and properties are protected, uh, it's also very saddening that it's a threat. And if that's a threat, you know, to the number one citizen, then the, the question Nigerians are asking is who else is safe? Who else is really safe? So, yes, security issue should be fixed, not because it's, uh, the presidential convoy or his advance team has been attacked or a governor has been attacked. Well, it's because we all have a right to life. It's been guaranteed by the Constitution and it's government responsibility to ensure that lives and properties are protected as also enshrined in the Constitution. The question is, how far have we fared in all of this? I mean, some people are saying 
the president himself has not treated these persons. I mean, we're talking about terrorists now, the bandits, whatever names we want to call them. Uh, they've been treated with kids' glove, and, and this is what it is. Well, you see, the rain might just be falling on everyone right now, on every roof. It's not limited to a certain roof or a certain region, one area. Very saddening, uh, very unfortunate. Another one is also uh, Kujay prison under a bomb attack. A group of terrorists just yesterday, uh, still yesterday when you also had the attack on the president's advance uh, team convoy, attacked the Kujay medium custodial center in Abuja. Uh, that's at the capital with bombs in an apparent move according to the report uh, to gain entry into the facility and free some of its member or its members. And that's also another issue. Now, uh, we also have reports saying you have high profile personalities in that particular facility. You want to talk about Abakiari, you want to talk about Farouk Lawan, and all of that. And you also have some prisoners, Boko Haram prisoners, all, who are also there. Uh, the conspiracy theory is also out, and some people are saying, what, what could it be? I mean, if you have an attack uh, on the prison facility, what does it tell? That you have some persons who are planning to free prisoners who probably would just be their uh, members. They talk about the offenders. But it's also important uh, to also note that the Kujay prison has several roads. And so on this particular road, military man all of this road. So how is it possible that you have the attack lasting for that long without any interception. Well, you can hear the sound now. Kujay prison is under attack, serious attack. You can hear the sound of bullets. This, are the, this is the sound of the bullet. Serious attack for how many minutes have they been shooting? Ah, God help Nigeria. Oh. Ah. Jesus. Oh, if you can hear the sound now, Kujay prison is under attack, serious attack. You can hear the sound of bullets. This, are the, this is the sound of the bullet. Serious attack for how many minutes have they been shooting? Ah, God help Nigeria. Oh. Ah. Jesus. And I said, uh, you have all of that comments right there. Away from uh, the attack on the Kujay prison, we're hoping that the relevant authorities will swing into action and uh, results will actually be gotten. I mean, those who are responsible for that attack will be brought to book. But some persons have given up and they're saying it's never going to happen. Away from that, you have Asari Dukubo calling Peter Obi a scam. And that's it. Uh, hopefully we're able to, you know, put out that uh, track for you and uh, uh, hear Asari Dukubo uh, talk about that. Now, in his description, I practically listened to that video uh, where he put out and he was expressing himself about the displeasure and he constantly said that uh, Peter Obi is a scam because according to him, an Umbra state is among uh, one of the states in Nigeria that is really endowed. I mean, as a state that's blessed with natural resources and as such, uh, should you be yielding results like other states uh, where you have Lagos, right? And uh, Port Harcourt, he mentioned. And so the reason why Asari Dukubo uh, is calling Peter Obi a scam is that, according to him, he was not able to harness the resources of, uh, uh, you know, the state to put the state at where the state should be. But the word he constantly uses is that he's a scam. He's a scam. He has a thought of a scam. And you want to ask yourself, what is the meaning of a scam or who is a scammer, if that's the word to go by? As someone who's fraudulent, very deceptive, an act of oppression, it deceives and defraud people. I'm just wondering if it might just be uh, a misuse of language at, at the time. It's okay. Everyone has a right to uh, freedom of opinion and expressing themselves. But in the context that you have Asari Dukubo calling Peter Obi a scam, you want to ask who is a scammer? 
uh, if you say that Peter Obi is a scammer, in the context that he's explaining, is saying that at the time where he was governor of Anambra State, with all of the resources that Anambra State has, uh, how much or what was he able to do uh, with all that Anambra State um, has? You know, was he able to convert all of the resources and nest it to ensure that, you know, uh, the state is actually put up on that map. We're talking about development and uh, it translating to the life and standard of living of the people. And for uh, Asari Dokobo, that's the reason why Peter Obi is a scam. But is that the word, you know, to use? Because if you talk about a scammer or a scam, uh, then you're talking about someone who's involved in deceiving people, taking money or whatever it is fraudulently. Of course, that's a fraudulent thing to do. Uh, <laughs> so... It's okay. Another one is that you have a South African man who actually takes a work for three years. Very, very interesting. And we have seen persons who take this uh, adventure for the sake of adventure. I usually think that you have some persons who do this because they just sit back and say, hey, what can we, what, what can I do? I mean, uh, they look at a lot of things that they probably would have achieved or, or things that they want to achieve at the end of the day and they say, we're going to uh, and back on all of this. It's it's really interesting, very intriguing to know that uh, someone actually traveled, you know, three years to get to a certain destination. That's it on our top trending conversation this morning. We'll take a break when we return. We'll be looking at the front pages of our national dailies. Please stay with us.